Hi, I'm John Nunn, and in this video I'd like to talk about a recent book from Gambit Publications, Chess Opening Workbook for Kids. The author, Graham Burgess, has chosen hundreds of interesting puzzle positions based around chess openings, mostly tactical but not all, and presented them in an entertaining style. Even though the book is perfect for kids, many club players would also benefit from tackling the large number of exercises in the book. I'm going to go through three typical positions from the book, which should give you an idea of the contents. And because they're puzzles, I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video and try to work out the solution for yourself. So let's dive straight into the first position. Here it is, it's white to play and we have to find a winning continuation for white. Well the question as it's posed in the book is, are all black's pieces as securely defended as they look? And one's first impression is that they actually are quite securely defended. All black's minor pieces have been developed. His green has moved, ready to connect the rooks. But there is a way white can exploit a hidden weakness in black's position. So now's the moment to pause the video and think about the position for yourself. OK, let's jump to the answer. The surprising solution involves a hidden weakness in the position. The black queen, although it appears to be securely defended by bishop and knight, is nevertheless vulnerable to capture. White has the possibility to eliminate or nullify the two defenders of the queen and then the black queen drops off. But white has to start with the right move and that's the surprising sacrifice of the knight on e5. This forces the d file open and it means that the white queen is able to go all the way down the board and take the black queen. Let's see how that happens. Black pretty much has to accept the sacrifice not only because he's lost the pawn but also because any queen move would lose further material. So black takes, and now white eliminates one of the two defenders of the queen with check. It's a gain of tempo because a check has to be responded to immediately. The most obvious way is to capture the checking piece, and then white takes the black queen. It turns out that the defense of the queen by the bishop is ineffective because the bishop is itself pinned along this diagonal. Black cannot take the queen, it's an illegal move because it exposes his own king to check. So the upshot of white's combination is that he's won a queen for two minor pieces, which is a decisive material advantage. Although one tends to think of the opening as being the phase of the game in which the two players concentrate on developing their pieces and getting their king to safety, unexpected tactical shots do arise quite often. And it's a good idea to have plenty of practice with them so that you can spot them when they arise. Let's now go on to the second position. This time it's black to play. And you'll notice that black is a pawn down. He's sacrificed a pawn in the opening. But in return, all his minor pieces are aggressively placed. And the white king, although it's sheltered by an unbroken pawn wall, is very short of defenders because all the white minor pieces are far away on the queen side. Moreover, white's pieces get in one another's way. The queen is blocking the development of the rook and the knight on d3 is preventing white pushing his pawn, which would be the normal way to allow the bishop to come out, which would allow the rook to come out. So white's position is congested, his development is not easy. But nevertheless, black has to find the right way to exploit the deficiencies in white's position. So now, here again, you can pause and think about the solution for yourself. Now let's take a look at the answer. Black plays a rather surprising knight sacrifice. It's a check for king, king, queen, so the knight has to be taken. And black just recaptures. And this sacrifice isn't obviously correct, because black doesn't have an instant threat. But the congestion in white's position and the lack of defenders on the king side 
mean that although White now has a spare move to defend, there isn't very much he can do with it. Black threatens to swing his queen in, either for example queen to c8 and then to g4 mate, or to move the knight and queen to g5 mate. There are various defensive attempts by White, but none of them succeed. Let's just take a look at a few of them. Perhaps the most obvious is to just take the bishop, hoping to advance the d-pawn and bring the bishop into the game. But Black replies by swinging his knight into an attacking position, preparing the way for the queen to come to h4 with the subsequent mate on h2. If then h3, queen h4, threatening to take the pawn and then mate on g2 or h1, pawn takes knight and queen h1 mate. Another possible move after the knight's sacrifice is for white to play h3, which looks as if it might stop knight g4, which was so dangerous in the previous variation. But actually black plays knight g4 anyway, again with the intention to bring his queen in. And after a couple more moves, say white tries to bring his knight across, queen comes in, while White's knights are positioned to stop the instant threats, this knight on e2 prevents what would have been a uh, mate on g3, bearing in mind the pawn on f2 is pinned by the black's bishop. This knight is stopping queen takes pawn followed by mate on g2 or h1. But the simple g5 <coughs> dislodges the knight and black gets to bring his queen into the attack and deliver mate after all. So the final possibility is for White to try to bring his knight to g3 where it would at least obstruct the g-file. But this doesn't work either, and black has a very nice refutation. Black moves his knight out of the way, putting it actually on prise to three different pieces, the two knights and the pawn, and clearing a way for the queen to come to g5 with mate. So there's no time for white to take the black knight. So white prepares to bring his knight to g3, but there's a nice refutation the knight jumps into the attack, threatening mate in 1 with knight h3. Knight takes f4, again allows mate in 1, queen g5. And after h3, it comes to mate in any case. Again, based on the pin of the f pawn. So this was a case where an opening gambit by black gave him such a large lead in development and so disrupted white's development that the further sacrifice um, was perfectly correct and really tore White's position apart and gave Black a decisive attack. These early attacks based on gambits can be very dangerous and once again it's something that you should be aware of in all your opening play. Now let's go on to the third position which is um, perhaps slightly more difficult. It's White to play and once again there's been a pawn sacrifice involved. Black is currently a pawn up. White has a slight lead in development but it's not that substantial. Black only needs a couple more moves, for example, to play e6 and bishop d6, certainly mate on h2, and black will repair his backward development and will be able to play to exploit his extra pawn. So white has to do something fairly quickly to exploit his lead in development and prevent black from um, consolidating his extra material. So now's the moment again to pause the video and think about how white should continue. Right, let's look at the answer. This position has actually occurred a number of times in over the board play and quite a few players have overlooked the winning move, which is rather surprising, bishop to a6. Turns out that the square b7 is the weak point in black's position. It's now under attack by the bishop and if the bishop takes the pawn, it's going to fork the rook and the knight. Black has various options, but they all lead to a catastrophe. If black takes on a6, white takes the knight with check, black has to move his king, and white takes the rook with check as well, with a decisive material advantage. Perhaps the most obvious continuation is for black to castle, but in this case, white takes the knight on c6 because black's castling move has self-pinned the pawn on b7. So now, if black doesn't want to stay a piece down, he has to take the bishop, 
but then white wins simply by checking with the queen and then rook d1 check skewing the black king and rook and leading to a decisive material advantage. So another possibility is for black to play e6 and the idea here is to meet bishop takes b7 with knight d4 which maybe isn't so clear black gets his knight away from the attack with gain of tempo because he's attacking the queen but there's a better move for white white plays bishop to f4 instead of taking the pawn on b7 and when black moves his queen somewhere for example here white moves his rook to b1 black for example moves his queen away somewhere and white gets to take the pawn on b7 in the end in any case so black only succeeded in delaying the deadly fork and not stopping it completely there are other continuations of black but they all lead to pretty much the same conclusion once white has found the correct first move it's all downhill from black from then on well these three positions give you an idea of the kind of puzzles which are contained in this book there's quite a lot of tactics um, but they should give you a good idea of the kind of disasters that can occur in the opening if you're not careful and of course if your opponent is a little bit careless they should give you an idea as to how to exploit um, mistakes by the opponent in the opening well thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll join me for the next video about a book from Gambit Publications.